Baltic Sea Action Plan, it is very important to include actions that combat the climate and biodiversity crisis we are currently in. One of the most important tools to protect biodiversity and to make a resilient Baltic Sea region is to designate Marine Protected Areas, MPAs. We currently have some MPAs in the Baltic Sea, but we are quite far from the goal of 30%. We are, however, very happy that the goal of 30% right now has been endorsed uh, by the working groups for submission to HOTS. Since this goal by many scientists all over the world, by IUCN, by the EU Commission, has been pinpointed as the minimum to be able to, to protect and safeguard our oceans. However, we're concerned that right now the updated VASAP actions don't include the goal of 10% strictly protected MPAs. And these are ones that there's there are no take zones. You can't take anything from there. You can't fish. You can't build anything. They're as free of human influence as possible. And they are also been shown to be crucial uh, as a tool to combat um, the loss of biodiversity and to ensure that um, we would have as resilient as possible sea against climate change. So both 30 and 10 percent need to be included in the updated BASAP since MPAs are some of our most important tools um, to protect the Baltic Sea and all the animals and habitats that live in there. Our only whale in the Baltic Sea, the Baltic proper harbour porpoise, is critically endangered with only a few hundred animals left. And for the new BSAP, CCB has proposed a new, a new action uh, on mandatory use of ADDs, acoustic deterrent devices, in on static nets outside of MPAs and also uh, closing of static net fisheries within harbour porpoise MPAs. This action aligns pretty closely with the ISIS advice that was published in May 2020 and would allow HELCOM contracting parties that are also mem EU member states to comply with the EU uh, environmental le legislation such as the Habitats Directive. However, it still seems that some contracting parties are not willing to include this action in the new BSAP um, because they see this as an issue for bolt fish. Uh, we'd like to say that Russia is not an EU member state, but we would very much like to see Russia take the bycatch mitigation measures as well. So we think it's relevant to keep this action within the BSAP. And also there is another proposed action in the BSAP uh, concerning closer cooperation between Helcom and Boltfish. Uh, and this issue on ADDs on static nets is clearly one of those cases where such cooperation should be stronger to really believe that this action should be included in the new BCAP and we hope that HODS will support this. We all know about noise. We all know how stressful and even painful loud noise can be. Not all of us know though that it is also loud underwater, also in the Baltic. Besides natural noises from animals or waves, the human noise inputs are massive and can come from ships, for example, but also from pile driving or underwater explosions. For marine animals, it can drive them out of, their, of, out of important habitats. It can prevent them from feeding. Uh, it can mask their communication or orientation. And in extreme cases, it can even lead to death. For the revised Baltic Sea Action Plan, there are several proposals on the table to reduce underwater noise, most of which have been assessed positively. However, it is still questioned if our knowledge is strong enough to act on the matter. We do know that it's too loud though, and it is crucial that we achieve a measurable and consistent reduction of underwater noise. We know enough to act and we need to act now.